Well, really, in this particular, I do this often with things, uh, just distinguishing what to me feels like the highest integrity and what does not. So I could share quite a bit about it. It's a very subtle art. And, um, and even though I personally, from my subjective experience, feel that I'm very, very clear on it, that still does not mean that everyone else will agree necessarily with your choices of integrity. But I get as close as I can get to what I believe and what I feel is the highest integrity, the highest selflessness that I can achieve in most of the situations that I would have to consider that. Um, specific to this scenario, it was simply to see if just a variety of things, like making sure that I'm not, making sure that the person itself remains anonymous in a sense, just as simple as that, uh, making sure that I'm not distorting any views for my own personal self-interest, that I'm not making myself look better than the other person in any way, that I'm not projecting accusations or blame on anyone, that um, that I'm not sharing things that are not relevant or that would, by the other person, be seen as a disclosure of something that was private, in that sense. So that's, those are some of the things that naturally then I go down the list and I check in. Okay, I can say this, and it would be a general statement of what I want to share, what is relevant. It's not relevant necessarily what occurred or what thoughts were spoken. What is relevant is that I want to share with you a certain process, which is that I effortlessly went from the most frightening thing two years later, not having thought about it in between that much, to being the most liberating thing, being able to generously give away my wife if she wanted to. <clears throat> and this was a mutual dialogue. It was just a hypothetical dialogue at the time. So I just go down the list and see like, what can I share about this that feels relevant, general, and like it's not intruding upon or detracting at all from her identity. Does that make sense? Okay. So th this was quite simple, but there is very complex, paradoxical, integrity requiring scenarios that are way more complex, that are harder to explain as well. But this was quite simple. It was just going down the list, making sure that I did not say anything that I would regret out of feeling like I did a dishonor to anyone involved. We live in a society that seems to expect when a question is asked, an answer will come back immediately. And um, I'd like to hear more about how you created a space for yourself to be comfortable saying, just a minute, I'm not ready to answer that yet. Oh, that was easy. Because I don't care about you guys. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't care what you think, that's what I mean by that. So I'm here to be who I am as purely as I can, and I would never want to sacrifice just blurting something out <clears throat> that I regret for the sake of, you know, you guys having to wait for a minute. That's okay. And in fact, I think it's relevant for you guys to see me do that. And it makes sense and it adds to the whole dialogue in some way. So it's just, I'm, I'm generally speaking, really, really comfortable um, not diluting what feels true for the sake of an external world. Why? because I've trained myself to the point where I don't really experience an external world anymore. So when I'm sitting up here, yes, I can reference you guys. And every once in a while, I feel like, every once in a while, it feels like, oh, there's something out there, but it's so a temporary projection and clarity that really my more constant experience is that there's nobody else out there, per se. So I'm just, I'm just being myself. So I'm not worried about someone else because you guys are all projections of myself. All I need to do is to be true. And if you wish to experience and define that through the sense of impatience, for example, like you could have done if I did this, I doubt any of you did, I don't feel that, but let's say that it was really annoying to you that I took a minute before I answered your question. Um, honestly, I don't care, that's your choice. You see, that's again, there's that integrity, that relationship, that is your free will. If you want to define that moment of pause, as impatient, as disrespectful, that's completely up to you. Like, it's not none of my business if you want to think that, if you want to believe that. Now, this applies to relationships too, same attitude. If you want to think the things you think about me, then you can think the things you think about me, and vice versa. So we're all free to be ourselves. So I leave it up to you. I'm not going to try to avoid your lack definitions by speaking faster or by doing something differently. Does that make sense?
It, it makes perfect sense awesome. if you're you. If I'm me. Right. Um, I think what I was looking for, and not to say that wasn't a perfectly wonderful answer, but everybody is at a different place in their learning and their sure. accessing. And so for those of us who are coming newer to this, sure. can you talk a little bit about what the process was like mm -hmm. for you to learn to to figure out how to make how to make that happen for yourself awesome. along the reason this is weird scenario approximately not weird scenario but maybe 10 years ago I was at this yoga retreat doing yoga meditation teacher course I was at this yoga retreat and I was talking with this guy that had some insecurities regarding women and other people looking at him and that kind of stuff and I remembered I was a wise ass even at that age um, and we had this dialogue and I was teaching him something from my past experience, which is that I noticed that when I was, um, I remembered this other experience where I was dancing, where I was whirling around or something like that in a group of people. And I very distinctly noticed, I was playing this game with my consciousness. I noticed I can either reference other people and uh, contract, or I could, it was simply mechanics. It was attention mechanics. It had nothing to do with these people. They're not actually there. I noticed that if I don't reference other people, they don't exist. I cannot judge myself. So I noticed that for most people, it's like, well, they actually do exist. So if I don't focus on them, then they're still judging me and I'm not controlling what I'm doing because I'm not thinking about what they're thinking. But no, for me, it was, they actually don't exist to me, so I don't care. And then I reference other people and then I care. And then I don't reference other people and they don't exist. So I actually am giving myself attention mechanics wise, the space to be absolutely free with no reference to other people. And after that, he started dancing like crazy. So that's cool. <laughs> so that's basically the mechanism to realize that in order to maintain your own purity and to in, in any situation, you need to realize that if you reference someone else's thoughts, if you reference someone else looking at you, you're forgetting that you are the observer of your reality, not other people. You are the observer of your reality. Your consciousness does not, in that sense, look at you from other eyes. You're looking at your own experience. So when you connect to that, you see that really there is no sense of other people judging you because it's irrelevant. And besides, it's none of your business what they think. Does that make sense? Or is that still too extreme, perhaps, or too radical? No, no, it, it makes sense, and it, it's helpful to think of it. You know, it's not like you can wake up one morning and say, okay, I get all this. Right. You know, none of you exist. Everything is... No, it's, it's definitely it's practice be a process. Getting, getting used to a different type of consciousness. Yeah, I would Thanks. say so. Yes, and one more thing I would add to that is that what's crucial to establish this connection with yourself to such an extent where it supersedes, it's more important than anything else, is to really desire that, to really see the relevance of that. The human nature is wired in such a way that it will always choose the path that it perceives to be the most beneficial, always. So if you're walking down a path that you instinctually know is not good for you, you must have a few beliefs or even just one belief that perceives a lot of value in walking the path that you know is not actually good for you. For example, in the dancing scenario, it might be that um, maybe you instinctively feel like dancing. The music is hitting you in a certain way and you feel the vibration and you want to move. You just want to move. Don't even call it dancing. You just want to move because there is this flow to that experience. You want to merge with the tones in the room. So you feel like moving. That is the resonance, right? In that moment, that's the natural, spontaneous, childlike sense of, I want to move. That's what's true. That's what's authentic. What comes in then is the idea of other people looking at you. And the belief is that I will get love if I don't do anything stupid. That's what most people think. If I don't act stupid, I'll be loved and accepted. I won't stand out. If I don't stand out, at least I can't be an epic fail. Right? Especially with dancing, because everyone is stupid when they're dancing, unless they've had sufficient training, but even then it's subjective. So every, just assume that everyone looks stupid when they're dancing. 
when they're moving. It's just a natural, weird thing. Everyone is different. There's not one way to move, right? Just in this example. And <clears throat> so the, the belief that leads you onto a path that's actually not of your resonance, but of your resistance to your true self, is something perceives benefit in not doing what you enjoy doing in that moment. The thought in this case probably being along the lines of, if I just don't move, even though I naturally want to move, but if I don't move, then at least they will not hate me. Maybe they may not love me because I don't stand out in an awesome way either, but they won't at least reject me or hate me or think I'm silly or stupid, which would equate to not being loved, not being accepted. So even though you know it's in your highest resonance to start moving in that scenario, you don't move because there is a belief in your mind that suggests there's a benefit to not moving. Hence, you will not move. So what's crucial with anything in life, and especially when it comes to maintaining integrity to your own connection all the way through and not caring what other people think, whether it's in integrity with relationships, communication, or dancing, or setting up your business, or whatever it is. Speaking your truth, no matter what, no matter who's around, no matter how it may land on their ears, no matter how they may interpret that, no matter how much they will love or hate project onto you, you need to desire to speak your truth and open open your energy system in that sense. You need to want to be in alignment with yourself more so than you wish to be loved by an outside source. And one way to eliminate ideas like that is to think, do you really care whether that silly looking person over there, which doesn't know shit, what they think of me? Really? Is that worth sacrificing your own energetic true alignment connection with? You need to see 100% benefit only in maintaining your own connection and zero benefit in not maintaining your own connection. If you have beliefs that suggest that not maintaining your own connection, your own truth, not being in alignment is somehow in your best interest, do everything, everything you can to transmute that idea and to show it that it's not true. Remember that it's truer to be true and that it's more rewarding to be true. As soon as your mind agrees with your true perspective, which is, it's more beneficial to be in alignment and to speak my truth than it is to not be in alignment and speak my truth, no matter what the rewards may be. When I choose to not be myself, the end result will always be cancer. Do you want to gain cancer by being loved by someone that's absolutely stupid, ridiculous, and doesn't know what they're talking about and forgets about you two seconds later? Is that worth cancer and misalignment and not creating the life of your dreams? I don't think so. It's nonsensical. So be in alignment with yourself. Breathe in your soul, breathe out your soul. Think your soul, speak your soul. Feel your soul, act out your soul. That's all you need to know. This is all about you. They are reflections of yourself anyway, generated out of your own higher self energy. They don't actually exist in the way that you think they do. They are mirrors of you. So don't fear yourself, you're just talking to yourself. Does that make sense? You got to align your vision as to what benefits you and what not. So much of the spiritual journey and clarity has to do with, and so much of spirituality would be simply eliminated and made redundant immediately if people simply knew what truly benefited them. If they cared enough about their lives to get their perspectives in alignment, to simply recognize very acutely, very clearly, like a Hitler on yourself, loving Hitler, very precise, be on top of it. Hey, is there benefit in that or is there not? But people don't care, you see? Just like, oh yeah, I don't know what's good for me or not. I don't care, I don't care what I want. It's all good anyway, it's all consciousness, you know. So we get sloppy, we get totally sloppy, we get totally lazy, and then we get totally cancerous. You don't want that, it's not worth it, is it? We wither and die, quite literally. We want to be alive, we want to be infinitely ageless. And in order to be tapped into that source, you need to align your vision as to what serves you and what's not, what does not serve you. So, so much of this is about mental clarity. It's about logic. It's sensical to understand that it makes sense to follow your heart and not the belief that other people can love you or hate you. It does not make sense from a higher mind's point of view. So, so much of the spirituality gets eliminated and transcended and the need for it disappears. In other words, you achieve everything that spirituality teaches you in an instant as soon 
as you understand and align the perspectives you have as to does this serve me, does that serve me, I can gain a little bit of love over there, I can avoid a little bit of rejection over here. If you simply get really, really real and clear and care about yourself for a moment and just align that and have that no-nonsense policy, have that no-nonsense policy field up like a lightsaber, like this whole field around you, no nonsense allowed, then you will naturally become more precise with yourself and notice when something is in or out of alignment, when something serves you or not. Does that make sense? Will you do this to an extent? Yes. Awesome, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay.